guess, Tom, I, I for Colton to get hurt, I guess how much how much improvement did you see from him uh, during his rookie year? Maybe what would your message be to him as he attacks off season? Uh, we saw a ton of improvement from you know when he was here in the spring to throughout the season. Just you know, he kept getting better and better, so it's tough for him. Uh, He's starting to make some strides as a receiver as well. Just to attack the rehab like he attacked the season, and he'll be fine. What's your message, I guess, to Caleb, um, who got the, I guess, key pen, penalty on Sunday? Yeah, that was tough because we want to create momentum and field position. We did the opposite. We created it for them. So, again, he's just got to be smarter. He's got to pull off. You know, we talk to him about that. We, we drill it. We train it. So i got to do a better job teaching him so he's not in that position and then we can't do it because then you give up points and especially on the road in the division that's hard to do like seem to suggest kind of on colton's play there's some like inherent danger in the, in the way guys can can go at you caleb's know, player or colton no colton's in the way he got hurt that there's oh. some, some danger to it yeah i mean that's a tough position you got two guys and they're running over 20 miles per hour and you got to change direction and that's just unfortunate um, Mike just talked a little bit about Kyle Phillips yesterday too, and said it's tough to get a, a slot receiver in the game when he's not returning punts. Is he has he continued to work on that, even though he hasn't? Been yeah, he, he's worked at, you know every day before practice catching punts, and when we do the punt team, you know he's back there catching them and trying to improve. See some some, some progress in that. I know it's hard to simulate game. Yeah, it's hard to you know simulate when those guys are flying down at you. It's a little bit different catching it just in the middle of the field with you know without all the action. We get a few of those reps, but not a ton. I sure hope so. <laughs> as long as you keep going, it does. Appreciate it. Uh, so, do you feel any different turning thirty today? I don't. I was expecting gifts. That's me. I, 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 okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Bet. Bet. I ain't, get no, I ain't got no song yet, but um, no, I'm still expecting gifts from y'all and everybody else, but they haven't popped up yet, so we'll see. What's it like having a birthday in an NFL locker room? Do you get jokes? Do you get uh, one-liners? What, what do you hear? Well, Ben Jones is gone, so I feel a little safe. I don't get no uh, shaving cream in my face. Um, guys are a little nicer, but, you know, it's it's, it's cool, um, you know, especially just uh, this, this time of year. Um, you know, I got family coming in, and, um, you know, uh, it's grateful to be able to see another one talked about that number with running backs and how people tend to to draw it as a bad line. I uh -huh. imagine you're, you're eager to disprove that. Yes, we'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned. We'll see. What does it mean that there aren't too many backs in, in your age area that are making, that are very productive? Do you feel you know, somewhat proud that, that you're still make, so productive? You know, one of the few backs at this age that are still so productive in the league? Yeah, um, you know, it's always uh, – you know, um, a good thing to be able to, you know, still be productive and um, be able to make plays and have an impact. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to be able to still still be in this position. Um, you know, I, my, my body feels good. Um, I feel good and, um, you know, just just ready to work and um, continue that um, um, as time goes on. This season hasn't gone the way you or the team probably wanted it to, but how good does it feel to get another Pro Bowl selection and have that honor? Um, yeah, it's always uh, a, a great honor to be to be recognized um, um, for your play, um, which you know I'm not too proud of this this year. But uh, you know, from your peers and everybody voted, I, uh, I really appreciate it. Very grateful to have my uh, fourth uh, selection. Um, um, don't take it for granted at all, and um, just appreciate everybody who was involved that. Uh, were able to get me in. Do you have to give yourself a little bit of grace, I guess? So you say you're not too proud of your performance this year, and the numbers aren't quite where they've been, but uh -huh. clearly your peers and everybody else still say you're one of the best and you're still over 1,000 yards this late in your career. Do you need to be easier on yourself? Uh, no, not at all. Um, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, you need to – Need a year like this um, to be able to grow, to be able to learn, to be able to reflect, and um, I'm definitely going to do that um, once the season's over. Um, you know, uh, if I wasn't fueled before, I'm definitely more fueled now. Definitely more motivated. Definitely more hungry, and going to this off season, um, attacking attacking it as hard as I can. But at the end of the day, um, you know, it's about being consistent, but being at, playing at a high level. And like I always say, I'm, I'm my worst critic, so I'm always going to be hard on myself regardless. Are there any backs 
who you've sought advice from about playing later in a career and kind of what advice do those guys give you about having long sustained careers after 30? Um, yeah, I had talked to uh, Barry Sanders at the Nike Suite last year at the uh, um, Super Bowl, and um, I had saw that he ran for 2000 when he was like 29 years old, and um, you know that kind of gave me a little a uh, little bit more motivation. And um, you know I was a big LT fan, so I watched him throughout his career. I really watched almost all, all the backs. Um, grew up down the street. Um, um, watching Fred Taylor and um, Maurice Jones Drew when they were a uh, tandem, so um, lot, got to watch a lot of great backs throughout my years and um, you know track their careers. And you know sometimes I go online and see what they what they did when they got to this age. And um, hopefully um, you know I can do some great things at this age as well. So. What do you anticipate Sunday being like? Driving to the stadium, going through your regular motions, but but knowing there's there's at least potential that it's the last time you're doing it in the home locker room there. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I would just treat it as any in any other game. I'm not. I'm trying to try to get too caught up, get too overwhelmed, um, and just in, in, enjoy the moment. Um, you know, focus on finishing the season strong, going out there playing a good game overall as a team, and um, hopefully getting a win. And then after the game, um, having talked to no media, going straight home. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. You think there'll be a, a, a moment somewhere along the way? I mean, there's obviously. Been going to be an introduction and, and, mm -hmm. and, and some fanfare when you leave the field and stuff like that? I mean, it, 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 I mean, it's definitely going, going to be a moment. Um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, just last game of the season, um, you know, I'll be free agent after this year. Um, been here eight years, so um, just be uh, grateful to whoever shows up. And I know the fans will, uh, uh, will come out and, you know, hopefully we put on the show, be able to, uh, be able to finish strong. But I'm um, just grateful for the whole process. Do you have family or friends or people in public who ever come up to you and talk to you about free agency? Is that something that ever has to come up, or is it something you can avoid pretty much? Yeah, I'm not really much. I don't really go out in public too much. So, but um, no, not not really. I think they'll talk about it once the season's over with, but uh, not too much. I'm too focused on what I need to do. You guys have been going at it since, I guess, April towards the season. Uh, what's it like knowing that Sunday is the end of it? And it's kind of weird that a lot of times you're playing to get in the playoffs until the very end, and then there's a sudden end. Now you know the finish line Sunday. What is, what is that like? It's been a, a short, long season, I could, uh, I would say. Um, you know, but, I mean, that's just, that's just what it is. That's the reality of it. Um, you know, you know, we love the game. Um, uh, but you know, just we, we just got one more, so just focus on on finishing it, finishing it strong. Um, you know, like you said, we're not happy about how the season um, went, but it's all about how you how you finish, and hopefully, you can finish it strong. Who is this to be taken care of from both the team perspective and your perspective in the off season? But is there a part of you, is a large part of you, that would like to play your entire career in the Tennessee Titans? Um, I mean, any player would love to play for the organization um, and finish out, finish out their career, you know, as, as, as long as they can. But like you said, it's the business side and all those type of things that, that go on, and I, and I understand that. So we'll just see how it shakes out during the off season. You told me to ask later on uh, a few weeks ago when I asked this, what has been your favorite run or moment since in the time you've been here? Just, Ask me after Sunday, on Sunday. Right. <laughs> I have an answer again. Still got another Still got, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see after Sunday. How are you going to celebrate your birthday? Uh, thank God for another one. Um, uh, probably get a, some cupcakes or uh, a birthday cake um, for my girl. My, my daughter's already been talking about it since she woke up. And um, she'll probably blow out the candles. Probably be a little spit on there because she <laughs> she's always <laughs> – <laughs> She's always excited for it. So, yeah, just thank God for another one. And, um, yeah, spend the time with my girl and my daughter. And um, wake up tomorrow and see another day. Thank you. Is it hard to, you know, you've got 22 back there possibly for the last time. Is it, is it hard to keep that out of your thinking for the game at all Sunday? No, I mean, our, like, our, our thought process has, hasn't changed. It's still going to be find a way to go in a game. Find a way to, to – to do a good job of, of you know playing good football, being physical, controlling the football, um, you know, and, and and putting our team in the best position possible to go win a football game. So that that's really you know I know it sounds like coach talk here, but that's really been the the in in the forefront in terms of our focus here and, and how we're approaching this week. He's handled the responsibility.
responsibility and the execution of that halfback pass so well. Has that made that easier to call kind of as time has gone on? Yeah. Um, you know, when, when you have a, have someone that's that's played as, as well as Derek has for such an extended period of time, um, you know, you you trust him with the ball in his hand, whether it's doing that, running the football, whatever it may be. Uh, he's proven that, you know, um, any job that we give him, he's, he, he typically goes out there and, and does a pretty good job of it. So when you have guys like that uh, that you can trust, um, you feel comfortable being able to go ahead and, and maybe think outside the box a little bit. There aren't a whole lot of running backs that is you know, turning 30 today that are still making a, a big impact on games. How impressive is that, that, that he's still a productive guy? It, it's really impressive. Um, and I think it's a, it's a testament really to, to the way he approaches, um, obviously not just you know, how he comes to work every day, but, but the, the, type of the, you know, the type of work he does in the off season, the type of the work he does outside the building during the season um, to, to not only maintain, but to continue to get stronger as the season's going on. Um, and, and again, you know, uh, the, the, the proof is in the pudding there, but he does such a great job of, of maintaining and taking care of his body. That's put him in a position to continue to be uh, effective and successful at this point in time. What do you think Tajay maybe made his biggest strides this season? Yeah, uh, you know, I know it's it's probably not a sexy answer, uh, but really like pass protection. Um, he does a great job with the pickups. He does a great job being in tune with everything um, in, in understanding that you know, as as a as a puppy coming in here, that was the the quickest way for for him to be able to go and, and gain the respect of his teammates, is to be able to go and face some people up, um, and and he's done a great job of, of being able to go and handle that responsibility, uh, in, in doing really anything that we're asking him to do, uh, when it comes to, to being able to go and pass pro. You know, you, 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 he's dynamic with the ball in his hands, and I think we all knew that when he got here, um, but but his continued attention to detail and and you know. Um, Effectiveness and, and pass protection has been impressive. We won't get a shot to talk to you after this game. How do you kind of evaluate how the first season's gone in terms of what you wanted to do offensively? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, we wanted to win more more games, wanted to to score more points. But you know, at this point in time, luckily we get one more opportunity to go out there and, and um, go out there and, 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 and play consistently for four quarters. Um, you know, again, uh, here we are talking about it whatever week it is in the season. Um, but we need to do a good job here uh, putting together, you know, these, these last couple of days of practice and then being able to go out there uh, and play play consistent, good style of football for four quarters on Sunday. Can you play for Josh Allen or do they move him around too much? To yeah, they do a good job of moving all those guys around. You know, it's not just him. Um, they, they've got a multitude of rushers up front that are effective, um, that have different skill sets. You know, 44 is big and long and strong. Uh, 41's, you know, does a good job of being able to use his length, and he's got some speed to power. He also has the ability to use some finesse, and then you got 95. So I mean, they've got they've got a multitude of guys up front uh, that they do a good job of in in their pressure packages. Well, worked his way back last week. He got to play for about a quarter before he gets hurt. If he's able to go this week, how valuable can four more quarters of an NFL game be for him? Yeah, a lot. I mean, just look at look at you know last week what came up. Um, there are a couple things that came up right uh, with with us being able to go and, and operate on the road. Um, some different things there, and, and, and just again, as as he continues to play the position, just the the things that, that come up organically. Um, you know, every game's a, a, a new opportunity for those situations for to, to come up, and and for him to be able to learn from those opportunities. And and uh, so yeah, I, I think you know each game presents an opportunity to be able to continue to grow in those different situations. What's the biggest area you've seen in his growth from the guy who stepped in, who we weren't even sure who would start the Atlanta game? The guy who's finishing the season. Yeah, I mean, he's 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 done a good job of just continuing to come in and work every day, and and not get too high, not get too low. Um, again, we'll we'll have a little bit more time to be able to, to dive deep deeper into those evaluations. Uh, but again, with with I only have a limited amount of brain power right now, and, and all that's going towards Jacksonville. The offensive line problems have been pretty well documented throughout the course of the season. What are some of the areas there, though, that you kind of see as positives from that group? Are there very many? Yeah. Um, again, it's 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 a tough position because when you know when you're getting noticed, it's for the wrong reasons typically. You know what I mean? So um, they they do good things for us. You know, in, in the run game, I thought we did a better job up front. Um, you know, at times being able to get into some of our combinations, and and, and we've continued to see, uh, you know, 
that execution improve. Um, unfortunately, again, it, it comes down to, uh, you know, there's one run in the goal line where, where we get, you know, four of the five up front are doing a great job and we have a breakdown at, at, at a position. So it, it, it's just a matter of, of us continuing to work out here with the different techniques and fundamentals to make sure they can be more consistent. Is, what kind of things has Skobronski learned throughout the course of the year? Has he, has he kind of leveled <coughs> off a little, or is he uh, still getting better? No, I mean, I, I, again, he, he's learned how to play a new position. Um, you know, I think a lot of times that gets overlooked. He, that transition outside to, from tackle to guard is, is a little different. I mean, everything's on you faster. Uh, you don't have as much space to operate. Um, so he's, he's learned, uh, a, you know, a new position, being able to slide inside the guard. And, and, you know, he's done a good job. Again, you go back and watch last week, there were multiple examples of him being able to go ahead and get movement, um, you know, at the point of attack and, and you know, uh, just, just again, continuing to be more consistent, right, with some of the different stuff that he's seeing, the handling some of the games, all, all the different things inside that, again, the entire group and, and, and everybody needs to work on. Showing you maybe, especially the last few weeks, is, is he come on th this year and, and maybe you know going into the off season, does he potentially carry some momentum at, at maybe you know holding down that spot? Yeah, he's. I mean, Dylan's done a good job of doing anything that that we've asked him to do. First and foremost, in terms of being a good teammate and and uh, really understanding, you know. The complexity of the multiple positions that he's played, whether it was left, whether it was right, whether it was guard, um, and so he's done a really good job of being able to to have that. Uh, responsibility thrown on him, and and being able to go ahead and and, and go out there and execute, and and oftentimes it wasn't really with a whole lot of a heads up. You know, there were a couple, um, you know, battlefield adjustments there where we had to slide him in or slide him over. So uh, he's done a great job there, being able to go and, and function. Um, you know, at, at the multitude of positions on both sides. Is right tackle as, as good a fit as any of the, the spots that he's played for? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's uh, you know. He's had he's had pluses and minuses at, at every position. So again, you know we're we're focused on on him being able to go out there this week and giving him the tools to be able to go out and and play well against a good front. And with all the movement on that line this season, has it been helpful to have a guy like Daniel Brunskill who comes in? He's obviously shown the toughness mm -hmm. throughout the season battling injuries, but he's a veteran. And yeah. On different how how beneficial has that been? Just. Sure. Yeah, I, I think anytime you get get a vet uh, that's played a lot of football, um, you know, that's that's uh, experienced the highs and lows. Um, it's good, especially when you have a younger room. Um, so he's done a great job in there, uh, you know, taking some of those guys under his wing and being able to kind of show them the ropes a little bit as, as to what it what, what it's like and, and what it takes to be, you know, a successful uh, offense lineman in this league. How nice is it to have Danico and Harold, particularly the way Harold's played here down the stretch, uh, as that threat on on uh, on that line, especially with Jeff out these last. Yeah, it's years. been big for us. Um, I think their production um, has been huge. It's been timely for us. Uh, great to get Harold back to where he's rolling, you know, and and you see the effort play showing up. The the reverse the other day, chasing it down him and Otis from the other side. So some of those old school Harold plays that we're accustomed to. Um, it's good, but can't say enough about both those guys and what they do for our defense. It seems like Autry has, has been overlooked for many years for one reason or another. Is it nice to see him at least get an alternate you know, Pro Bowl? Yeah, he's deserving. He's a Pro Bowler in my mind. Um, everything he does for us and the impact he has on the game each week. Um, just happy for him, well-deserved, earned. Um, so hopefully, Hopefully he's able to enjoy it if he's able to get out there. What do you think has enabled him, though, at, at his age, being an older player, to still kind of be so effective? Yeah, I think his approach, his, his daily approach, um, the way he studies, the way he prepares, uh, and then his ability to go out there and be instinctual, right? Play with instincts. He's got a good, good feel for how linemen are trying to block him, right? He's able to use his quickness. I mean, he's a unique. He's got a unique skill set because he's so long, but at the same time, he's so quick. He's able to get on edges in a hurry. He can win a lot of different ways, right? So, um, and he understands that. And I think as games progress, he understands how guys are blocking him. He's able to counter it as the game, as within the game. What have you seen from? What have you seen from Otis Reese in the brief trial he's had it? Inside linebacker. Yeah, I think he's taking steps. I do. Uh, you see flashes out there, him making plays. I think he's flying around. Um, we knew his physicality a little bit from preseason and the opportunities he's had there. So he's done a good job up at this point. He's just got to 
continue to be consistent. Um, don't get complacent. Don't be happy where he's at. Continue to improve and get better. And special teams always, that's going to be a big thing for him as well. Can he give you an element maybe of speed on this defense that's maybe been missing in a few spots? I mean, it showed up here these past few weeks, him, him running. I think anytime you get those effort plays, he, you see him open up and run, it, it's evident. Kayvon Wallace, who's played a little bit more lately, too. I, yeah, I it's, good, it's good to get him back last week. Uh, I mean, he's battling through some stuff. So he's been good since he's been here. I think he's uh, done a good job for us. So hopefully that continues here this week. When you, when you see the, the lineup, like the starting lineup you guys have, have put out there like the last several weeks and some of the names just you know, not as recognizable, is it a little bit mind-blowing just how different the lineup has been you know, going down the stretch here compared to – yeah, I mean, those are things that are out of our control, you know. Like, we got to coach the guys that are available. We got to get them ready to go, and they got to go play and hopefully make the most of their opportunity, right? And that's our job. So, whoever's out there, they got to go perform, and hopefully, we can do a good job as a coaching staff of preparing them to be able to put their best foot forward. What's the most we've seen out of Elijah Mould in terms of playing games? Because he's had injuries the past few seasons. Um, how do you feel like his growth has been being able to actually build off of that and playing in games? And like, what would you want to see more from next season with him? Yeah, I think I think he's done a good job for us. Uh, I mean, I, as a rookie, he had a really good year for us at playing inside. So I think just the transition to safety for him has been an adjustment. And I mean, hopefully it continues this week. He's going to have opportunity to go out there again this week and go play. And this guy continue to improve. Like all these guys, just continue to improve. We're not going to see you after this game. When things haven't gone well enough for the defense, what, what in your eyes has been kind of the root of the problem? Yeah, I mean, right now, man, I'm focused on Jacksonville, see if we can find a way to win this thing and, and end this thing on a good note. And we just got to keep improving. We got to become more cohesive as a unit. And each week, play in and play out, we got to be ready to go. And hopefully this weekend at Jacksonville, we can do that. What's, what's prevented the cohesion, you think? Uh, I think combination of things. I think we just, that's one thing we strive for all the time is just the communication, the execution, understanding every guy's got a role on, on every single play, right? And we just got to make sure everybody understands and goes out there and executes and does their job. Christian Kirk practice uh, today. If he can go, how much does he change things? A lot. You know, a lot. He's a really good player. Um, they're talented, right? On the perimeter, they're talented across the board. So uh, we're going to have our hands full. If, he, if he's available, if Zay Jones is available, it changes things for sure.